Hey guys, my name is Nick, Microsoft Certified Expert Administrator. I create a lot of content for MSPs, and in today's video I'm recovering Administrative Units in Azure AD. If you're not familiar with Administrative Units, they are something that Microsoft's created here, much like you are familiar with with creating organizational units in local Active Directory and Windows Server, but they don't have as much of the capability. So I'll be going through how you create one today and what the benefits are. But before I get into that here, if you guys want to see more content around Microsoft 365 and the MSP space, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Going over here, I'm in the Azure AD Admin Center here in a particular tenant that has business licensing, Microsoft 365 Business Premium. Azure AD P1 is a requirement to have the capabilities of creating administrative units, and only global admins in here can create these units that can then be assessed across the organization. So with these, basically you've had this fundamental hierarchy uh, that is flat within Azure AD, and primarily you may have tried to separate out the management aspect of various users and groups in the sense of security groups within Azure AD if you're running a cloud-only environment. If not, you're running a hybrid environment and, and managing all that in local Active Directory. With the introduction of Azure AD administrative units, you do have the ability to separate out the administrative task across groups and funnel in different members and different owners of those groups who have various RBAC roles. So if you want to follow a model least privilege, this is one of the best ways to start doing that and get a little bit more organized within your tenants. As an MSP, you might have customers that vary in size, but I would say that administrative units are primarily built for the larger MSP, who has a lot of staff that may not need to go into every single customer environment or you're co-managing it with another MSP or with the actual customer site and you want to have or grant the ability for certain users to go in, modify users licensing, be able to change their passwords, be able to change group membership, things like that. Uh, while not giving them access to every single group or every single user within the organization. So fundamentally, it's looking at a model of least privilege. And again, before we get into it here, just quickly, the licensing aspect. This is something where you have to have Azure AD P1. can be bought standalone or it is a part of certain bundles that are very popular in the SMB space. Primarily EMS plus E3, which comes with Intune, Azure AD P1, and Azure Information Protection Plan 1. But more so, the more popular option these days is becoming Microsoft 365 Business Premium, which comes with a lot of security and compliance features as well as uh, the Azure AD P1 offering included as well too. So back in here, I've already created one just for the purposes of demoing here, but if you want to add a new administrative unit, you can go ahead and name this whatever you want. So you can call it Southwest Region and you could name this whatever you like and give it a proper description. But the next thing you're going to do is assign these certain roles. And this is where the least privilege access comes into play. So this could be some people within your organization as the MSP who is managing on behalf of this particular customer and you want to separate out the roles. But again, in a lot of cases, it makes more sense if you're co-managing this with somebody else or there's people within the organization who are wanting to perform these tasks as well too and do more self-service from the standpoint of license assignment, password resets, things like that. So you have these basic roles here that Microsoft's populated. There is no way to add another custom role within here at this point in time. There probably will be in the future as well as more granular RBAC that they'll add in here. But these encompass a lot of the day-to-day -day activities that you would want from a model of least privilege. So you can pick somebody as a user administrator, and then it's going to look into your Active Directory. And it's going to allow you to go ahead and add a certain user that is going to be the user administrator here for this particular group itself for this unit. After we're done here, we can go ahead and you can assign multiple roles to multiple people, assign multiple people to the same role. But whenever you go to review here, you can go ahead and just create. This necessarily isn't giving you the option yet to go ahead and add the users or groups that this person could manage within here as part of that role. So afterwards, after you're done, you'll notice that no members are actually in here and no groups are. But if you go back to roles and administrators, you do have the ability to go in and see that Bruce Wayne here 
is given the role here for user administrator in this particular region. And then you have to go back in and actually scope this to the particular users you want them to manage in this particular case. So it's kind of limited here. You can bulk add members or bulk remove members if you really wanted to, and it just has you upload a CSV file, which I recommend if you're doing this in, in bulk here. You can't even do it in bulk with PowerShell. Um, you need to do it with a CSV. Otherwise, you'd have to add one member at a time. And this is the member that then Bruce Wayne, as the unit administrator, can come in and, and have access to in the sense of being able to reset passwords, being able to uh, manage your basic contact information, day-to-day -day tasks like that. And the same thing in the sense goes with groups. Groups is kind of confusing though because while you are adding a group for management for this particular administrative unit, you don't necessarily have access to all the members in that group. As the group administrator, you would have access to change who's part of that group in the basic name and description and things like that, but you don't get access to the underlying members in that group, which I think is a, is a little clunky in the sense of what you would want to do. So all of this being said, it takes a minute too, by the way, for this to actually populate. My experience is like three minutes, so don't be alarmed if it doesn't show up right away um, for this particular piece. But this does allow you to then, again, get, get this model of least privilege, separate out user roles, and have the ability to start chunking out your groups. And I would assume that Microsoft would be adding more and more resources to this over time in the sense of devices as well too, and, and tying that into Intune. I think that's on their roadmap in the sense of uh, more development work to come. But this is what's available today. Again, I feel like this is for the larger MSP. Get you outside of the security group mindset if you're running cloud-only deployments. And as you begin to think about the transition from hybrid environments, it also makes this a little bit more manageable in the sense of moving from OUs to what you previously had to do, which is flat hierarchy of, of cloud-only users and groups, to now administrative units for giving people privileged access into those user accounts to do self-service capabilities, things like that. So that's everything I want to show in this video. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, like or subscribe if you guys want to see more content around Microsoft 365 and the MSP space. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.